The uh, the Secretary of State, Mac Warner, who's also a candidate for governor, uh, yesterday on the telephone, he, he was uh, caught up trying to get from Morgantown to here yesterday in that weather, and you can imagine what I-79 oh. North and then 68, 68. was like. Oh. Uh, so it took them six hours to make that three-hour drive. And when he got here, he had promised he was going to be dropping off from some of his wife's uh, Debbie famous rum cake which he did just as I was getting ready to walk out the door. In comes Mac and Lee Dean and the aforementioned rub cake. So uh, the rum cake was wrapped up and refrigerated uh, overnight. And this morning when I came in, I set it out because I knew Bill was coming in. And I thought, well, if I don't unwrap it, uh, it will look like no one should touch it because no one, no one wants to take the first or the last piece, right? Amen. So I took one for the team and at 5 a.m. I Cut a little, tiny little slice of rum cake just to get the I'm, cake started. I'm going to rebut that just a second. Go ahead. Just to get the cake started so that Bill would feel more welcome when he came in. And then Bill came in, and I think he consumed about half the cake before. You had rum cake already? Before uh, wow. Before the show. But there, if, i got to come earlier. I think it's actually straightened his language out a little bit. I can understand him a little bit better this morning. <laughs> well, yeah. question, Most, is the rum cake on the same um, uh, amount of rum would you discern as the rum balls, a.k.a. Daryl Shull. Oh. The, there's, in both cases, <laughs> rum was flowed was freely. Okay. It was a lot of rum in both cases. Okay. But going to, to Rob's story, and basically it's true in yeah. most parts. So let's just basically. end it there. There's, there's no reason to elaborate. Stop, yeah. when, I, right? when I went there to The cut, witness is dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I went to cut my piece, after listening to Rob tell the story, I went in expecting a small sliver to be cut Which out. is all there was taken. <laughs> you kidding me? It's a, half, a, a quarter of the cake was gone that one slice. We have no evidence of that at all. Well, I, unless some Somebody else came in and cut a slice. Ron, you'd been impressed. You can go and look and see. But the question now, is, is there is still some amount. left? I'm okay. sorry? Can I get some after oh, the show? Oh, there's, there's still a lot left. Okay, yeah. great. So yeah. That's comment, all I care about. My only comment on that is, <laughs> <laughs> my only comment on that is, uh, we were discussing rum balls the last time I was here. Yeah. See? So. <laughs> yes. Here you go. We, we, we don't have a lot on our agenda, Ron. We're, we're, we're very limited in our focus. There seems to be a theme. <laughs> for, for whatever reason, the, the folks who participate in the show as audience or guests feel that the show Wicker would be better infested. with a lot more rum. <laughs> yeah, yeah liquor infested oh, drinks. Oh my goodness! And it's I think they're trying to outdo themselves about the amount of rum. It's uh, maybe a contest. Yeah, I yeah. travel in the Caribbean. You have straight shots of rum, and uh, well, this this cake is not a straight shot exactly, but it's close to it. it is, the cake got in the it's, way of the rum. It's very good. But you, it's a good thing that that Mac uh, held off eating the cake as he was driving over here. Otherwise, he never would have gotten here. He would have been uh, up at some. Up Upside down, some tree somewhere. <laughs> but our guest in this segment is Ron Stevens, superintendent of schools here in uh, Berkeley County, and uh, everything op open, operating, and running on time today in the schools. Yes, Ron? yes, right. we are. Uh, we're open. Everything is uh, operating on time. I didn't see any delay messages anywhere. No, we we had a few uh, a few routes that um, no power outages had, or anything no, this morning. No, no, we just had a few high routes. water. We had to alter a few stops. Um, but everything else, you know, I give kudos to um, our, our transportation department. The bus drivers have been fantastic dealing with this and, you know, work the Department of Highways uh, over the weekend and uh, Monday morning and yesterday and, you know, just their, their feedback today. The collaboration is great. Ron, you've mentioned the past uh, uh, shortage of bus drivers. Are you fully staffed now? Uh, no, but we're getting closer. We're, we're getting closer and um you know just uh, from the beginning of the first semester we evaluated the number of uh vacant or absent runs um where we were short drivers and you know i know we talked about this before and uh you know my heart goes out to to the the parents um you know for those morning morning calls um, but our transportation department has actually covered 84 percent of of the runs that were vacant or uh absent drivers um so yeah we're yeah that we're 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 improving we're getting there 84 sounds like a large number to you does. look at the other side 16 percent that's exactly are not being right served. yeah well that's that's 16 percent of the vacant runs that's not 16 percent of all of, of our runs okay, okay. yeah that's that's yeah. only 16 percent of the 
of the ones that don't have um, a driver. And we talked about before too, Ron, the um, the need for substitute drivers as mm-hmm. well. What about, because that's what Bill Stubblefield's going to do on his two days that he's not here. <laughs> we were trying to recruit him last time. Okay, I know. No, and just, that just one, because he's not uh, doing Thursdays. He's got his uh, breakfast Thursday. with my car. Was okay. that, uh, can, this, is, this has got to be on days without the rum cake. Though. I was going to say, that's yeah. my point. Can yeah. I have my rum cake we're, we're not serving rum cake. <laughs> exactly. Here. But how, what's your um, cadre of, of um, substitute drivers? Are you in good shape there? Uh, well, you always um, need more. We're, we're all, we're, we're in need of more, mm-hmm. and um, you know our uh, our um, I can't think of um, the um, the recruiting more, that more we rum did. cake run. I might need that. I might need that. No, the recruiting that we did. I'm trying to think of the date. It was back in October, uh-huh. where uh, was you know get an opportunity to go to transportation department and drive a bus. It was right. very successful. We've got a number of people interested. Um, it's a six to eight week process to get people. It's um, a lot of training. It is a lot of training. So uh, we're, we're starting to see people from those, from that time who are rolling over and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and we think that we're going to have more. So, you know, we're, we are getting better and, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I suspect by the end of January, beginning of February, we will finally have all of the runs covered and start to accumulate substitute drivers. If, if you remember when we talked about this before, it's, it's the morning runs where we don't have substitutes to take the runs that are causing us, that cause the, the issues. Our drivers works, uh, diligently. Anytime someone is going to be out or to cover runs and we have a day's notice, we've been able to cover almost all of those. Uh, but it's the, it's the morning of, and uh, those are the, when, we, when we're able to fill all the runs and then start to fill our substitute um, list, that's when we'll, uh, we'll start to have a little more well, success. Let's, let's talk about yesterday morning specifically, Ron, <clears throat> Absolutely. the decision to not do the two-hour delay mm-hmm. or what have you, and then subsequently what happened afterward. Tell me everything that went into that decision-making process. You know, that is, um, you know, you, you try to make the most um, educated decision that you can. Um, we participate in a National Weather Service regular meeting, a weekly. Uh, there's actually two calls that we're on, um, and anytime there's forecasted weather, those calls, uh, the frequency increases. Um, and all of the National Weather Service forecasts, all of the, the, uh, all the prognosticators, if we knew everything, we'd get them all right. Um, but all the prognosticators had, had the weather being rain in our area, uh, and further west is where the, the line was gonna be. Even the team that was up at four, hitting the roads, looking at things, found wet pavement and no indication that there was going to be any any difference there f- for us. And were then any there, of those folks at higher elevation though? They were. They were. They hit our trouble spots, um, and it was right around the time. You know, we have to make these calls. You know, by five five thirty, in order for there to be an effective change. If if we can't make it by that time, then every everything is already rolling. The drivers are already out. People are already being picked up. Um, so this weather system came in right at that time, it and it switched over, um, and and caused issues on the west side. And, you know, the Back Creek area got some, you know, significant snow um, over there, a, a couple of inches. Um, but it really was. It, it's it's the slush. It's the wintry mix that that hit some of those higher elevations. So. Um, our drivers did a, a great job. The buses really handle that pretty well, um, but it's sharing the roads with uh, with other drivers, lighter vehicles that are having difficulty with that. And um, you know, there were there were accidents that were on 81. There were accidents that were on you know on some of the back roads. Um, we did have a couple of a couple of uh, buses that hit some hit some slick spots and wanted to pull over. Kudos out to the Department of Highways. I don't know how they cover as much as they do with the limited resources that they have. Um, but as soon as our transportation department notified them of, of areas, uh, they were out there. And, um, you know, so we were able to get everybody, transported everybody safely to school. And, um, you know, that's, 
Yeah, that's the bottom line. How, well, how long was the longest delay in terms of when this buses that were delayed were able to get to school? Do you know? I, I, I don't. And, you know, we have two separate runs. We've got an elementary run and a, and a, a secondary run. The secondary run came in a little bit earlier. I think notification that the, the final group had been dropped off and everybody was in school was um, uh, shortly after 9 between 9 and 9.30 when I was notified, everybody was was in. Was there ever any time during the morning when any of the kids on the buses were in a, an unsafe situation? Well, I, anytime you're in a move, moving vehicle, you, you don't know what's coming at you. So mm-hmm. the unsafe situation, uh, as I said before, our, our the buses are, are like armored tanks out there. <laughs> and so if there was nothing else on the roads, um, That'd be you know, I would feel really good about that. So the unsafe situation, of course, comes in uh, any time that there's unpredictable weather and you've got other people that are not aware of it as well. Um, and well, you have that overlap. Let me set that, that up uh, a little bit better because obviously I-81 is an unsafe situation mm-hmm. on a 75-degree sunny day. Uh, but in specifics... Uh, was there were there any situations where you had buses that were trapped with ice or snow on a road that they couldn't get up or down, uh, and you had to send uh, someone in to relieve the kids off the off the buses with a better vehicle or something? Uh, we, we I was did, getting all kind of texts and reports here. Yeah, was, we we of, did not have to do that. We did have, uh, as I said before, there were there were a handful of buses that encountered some roads um, that the the drivers deemed were unsafe, uh, and and they do that when they notice any slippage or they see a car around them that has some some sliding and uh, they they pulled over notified our transportation department and we called the department of highways so and then what happens they department we wait for the roads to be treated um and that that's what caused the the, most of the delays those are the texts i was getting yesterday Mm -hmm. about buses pulled over because the conditions of the roads well it's it's precautionary and you know um that that's how the the weather calls start with uh, putting the safety of the students uh, and and staff at a at a priority. That's what the calls are are about. That's why we make these decisions for two hour delays and 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 um, you know on cancellation days. Uh, and once things are running, those decisions are still being made, and those individual individual drivers have to a- assess those situations. And I give them credit uh, when they get to a situation like that. They've been taught, told. Uh, and they put the safety uh, of the kids uh, paramount, and they pulled over and waited. I've had Eric Kiesecker, the director mm-hmm. of transportation, on the yeah. program. Uh, he does a great job explaining the process right. and the procedures. I know your bus drivers are very well trained. So they did what they were supposed to do. They did. And they waited until the Department of Highways treated the roads to keep everybody as safe as possible. The next thing, if you could address, uh, dealt with the governor's declaration of uh, state of emergency for all 55 counties. I was getting questions asking me if the governor declared state of emergency for all 55 counties, why did Berkeley County not have at least a two hour delay because of the state of emergency? Well, I'm, I'm not your, uh, I'm not a typical politician, so I can't tell you the the rationale for declaring a state of emergency, but um, the state of emergency really is tied to funding and what's available when when a state of emergency is declared. Um, for us, the Berkeley County School System is responsible for educating students in the safe safest environment possible. And if there's uh, if it is if it is safe, we want to continue to have school. Um, as as simple as that sounds, that is what we came down to. I'm I'm confused. State of emergency is tied to dollars. What do you mean by that? Um, if there is a state of emergency, again, I don't. I, I'm not. That's not in my wheelhouse. It, it's my understanding that um, when a state of emergency is declared, that it it does make funding available for um, recovery efforts. Um, and for dealing with those types of things. For instance, if there's a major snowstorm, if there's a flooding okay. event, if there's uh, so things like that. that Making money available to the school system. Yes. Okay, fine. Not just the school system, but to local counties, local, local governments. Yeah. Uh, Ron, uh, we're talking about uh, 
safety and, and driving and the like. Uh, there's an issue that we had last year that we talked about, but I've not heard anything recently, and that's a hardening of the schools. Where are we in achieving the objective that we feel our schools are sufficiently hardened? And real quick, a clarification from Damon Wright on the Board of Education. The governor declared a state of preparedness, not a state of emergency. Okay. There's a difference. Thank you for the correction, Damon. Yes. Um, I, I'm sorry, Admiral. Say talk, that again. Yeah, talk about the hardening. Of oh, the, the hardening schools. of schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that is going to be an ongoing process. I realize that is going, that's, it's going to be an everyday process, testing and looking at things and, and, and uh, reviewing. Uh, you know, and I, I give kudos to the, uh, the uh, sheriff's department and, you know, the city police department for, <clears throat> for helping us with walkthroughs through schools, uh, addressing areas that, uh, that they see. Um, some of those areas are, are ad addressed within our school bond. And uh, you know, to be able to have safer entrances uh, to schools, and some of those areas are, uh, you know, deal with windows and doors, or fencing, or a line of sight, uh, as simple as trimming bushes and trimming trees so that there's there's um, uh, the line of sight is not blocked. So there, the hardening of schools is a is a broad term, and it really talks about the school safety and making it. You know the way I interpret it and talk to the people in uh, in, in our circles is we're, the hardening of schools means we're making it harder for people to uh, to access them. Yeah, uh, unauthorized. People, you said some say. some of this uh, and a lot of these are big ticket items uh, in the school bond. Mm -hmm. uh, you were going to have some discussions with our local legislators about trying to get dollars dedicated for this particular purpose, not only just Berkeley County, but schools in general. Uh, was any progress made last year on that, and will you continue that discussion this year? Every chance we get, we, we talk about that. Um, you know, those, those are things that we've, um, again, our planning committee for our uh, the, the CEFP, for instance, every every organization that that comes together to talk about the future of Berkeley County Schools, one of the topics is uh, school safety, yeah. and and what we can do, and where the funding would lie, and what we can do with that funding. Um, whether we get funding or not, we're charged with the safety of the of the buildings the, and the people inside, and that's um, you know that's we take that seriously. Sure. So this morning I saw um, a video clip, and it's been around a couple days now, of a, a student just taking out a teacher, just tackling a teacher, and I don't even know where it was. Um, but In I mean, Berkeley County? No, 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 no. Um, it was pretty, um, pretty amazing to watch because this teacher went down, the student was apparently – on drugs, the story was about um, not just safety, but um, how students have become more out of control since the pandemic and um, what you do to protect your staff who's already in the building um, when you have students who are um, out of control. I mean, how do you deal with that? You know, that that scares everybody mm -hmm. um you know and i i hearken back to times when i was actually in the classroom and you know there there were situations where students were uh, aggressive towards staff members then um you know i still have family in in that are in classrooms my wife is a teacher i have other friends and family that are in um, in classrooms um and that that seems to be a topic where people are talking about it more. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's happening more. Okay. Uh, I, I do think that we're getting more coverage of it. And, okay. and I think that, that it's it's available to be seen more. I think the clip that you're talking about has been around for a while. Okay. As making another round. Okay. Um, but I do feel that right now we're battling a situation where people in general are feeling more emboldened. They're, they're feeling more empowered. And if drugs, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. are, are involved, that certainly leads to poor decision-making as well. So if you feel emboldened, you feel empowered, you're under the influence of anything, uh, I, I, 
I worry about the decisions that are going to be made there. I, um, you know, that's that's a that's a very difficult situation that you're describing. Right. Uh, and very recently, that it, you know, it happened in a courtroom. There was a, a defendant yeah. that, uh, Saw that, that jumped over the bench after a judge. So, you know. Uh, this is this is not something that's just in the schools. I, sure. I think that it is um, pervasive. It is pervasive across society. So, you know, it's if those things happen, we we take it very seriously. Those students are removed, and and we we follow um, every step that we can follow to get the student help if need be, but to make sure that the school and the, and the class and the teacher or students are safe. Ron, what what are you hoping to get from the legislators this year? Everything. Well, <laughs> to start with list. the governor's five percent pay <laughs> increase, yeah. right? <laughs> well, we you know um, there there was a lot, and we had a discussion uh, with our legislators uh, back in November, and we uh, we talked about a whole variety of different things, and you know they just are in session now, and I, I I'm we'll be interested to hear not just from the school standpoint, but what topics make their, um, but make their discussions. My question, what would you like to see? Come? Oh, I would love to see specifically, not the, just everything uh, specifically. Um, you know, we brought up safety and you know, there's, there's measures that 10 years ago, school systems uh, didn't have to consider. And there's there's no funding for for the increased hardening of schools for the increased um, presence of of law enforcement or security officers or or other types of measures. So any type of money or funding that would be could be tied to to that would would be paramount. You know, again, those are things that are not in schools budgets. You know, those are new things that we're going to have to we're going to have to pay for. Does that require another bond, perhaps? It, it could. It, it it could, and that is, uh, you know, that's. It, we just are looking for funding sources for that. You know, we we had uh, the cyber incident last year. Um, there are things that, you know, we need to not just protect students and staff and people physically. We need to protect, you know, their information. And, and everything that's there. So those are things that we didn't, they, they didn't, they weren't on anyone's radar, you know, yeah. a while back. So those are types of, of things that we need help with our school funding formula and to address that formula. One of the positive things that came out of last session was uh, an aid, additional aid in the mm -hmm. pre-K to what, second or Three. third? Third grade? Uh, third grade. Third grade. Uh, and I, I, I realize it's only been in effect one year. It's kind of hard to judge the uh, success of it. But do you see this program aggressively expanding? Um, you know, there are hurdles with, with any change or any update. And with this particular one coming at the time that it came in, um, we didn't have a pool of applicants just waiting to jump in that were educated and ready to make this move, at, you know, our – our first grade classrooms, our second grade classrooms, our third grade classrooms hadn't hadn't worked with um, instructional aids in there with them before. So there's training that has to be done, but you know, we we need qualified. I, I, I'm stopping short of saying we need bodies. We need qualified people to fill those positions. Got to have a pool of applicants, right? Yeah, we've got to have a pool of applicants to be able to fill those positions. Right now, it's a shell game. They're they're moving from um, less desirable positions to what they would perceive as more desirable positions within the system. So we haven't increased the actual. I mean, we have increased the number, um, but we still have vacancies. Um, and thank goodness they, you know, I think this is a very good thing. I think all the additional help that we, that we can get. Uh, for students to be able to read by the end of third grade, that's the goal. So in terms of training, Ron, without going into a ton of detail, can you have someone, because this is on the school service side of the school aid formula, correct? Right. The aids. Right. We don't want to get into the school aid formula. We should take a whole, a whole show to talk about that. But um, so could you have 
a cafeteria worker apply for one of those aid positions? Not to say that the, the skill set isn't commensurate, yeah. but you'd have to have some training. And then is that what you're referring to with the shell game? Or? Well, you know, for instance, we have aides uh, in the school system, instructional right. aides in the school system that um, work uh, and have for years in our special education classrooms, mm-hmm. our kindergarten classrooms, mm-hmm. our pre-K classrooms. Okay. Some of those are are challenging. You know, when you're, if, if, especially you know, a special needs pre-K classroom, having to having to um, clean children, change, change children, diapers, you know, absolutely. all of those kinds of things. Uh, and now there is a possibility that they can work as an instructional specialist in first grade and not have to do that. Ah, so. Uh, those with experience who are doing a great okay. job in our pre-K, maybe you know, we're, we're seeing that that our current aides are moving, are wanting to move to these other areas. And that's happening around the state, but we, we happen to have, um, you know, just just more. The volume here of uh, vacancies is, is larger than, than in other places. So um, So they're moving out of those, and then it's very difficult. You know, we're already having difficulty finding those aids, and then you're wanting to find them now for the more challenging positions. And in our heads, we know that second grade is coming. So are we just training these aids to then jump to second grade again, and now we're going to have to, you know, so it's not just, but but also other service personnel, you're correct, um, could could make that could, could make that and, could make that change Jackie long commented that they obviously they have to pass the competency yes, they, they have aid to, test they have to be right. eligible they have to have the minimum requirements but um, they can they can uh, so they're already in the school system they're they're um, you know they're they're comfortable with the benefits the schedule that may be a, a change that they would be willing to make. Gotcha. Ron, I'm just about out of time. Do you have yep. any superintendent shout outs you want to do? All my lands. Uh, you know, first of all, I've already mentioned them, but, um, you know, just the work the Department of Highways has done in the last week has been um, been phenomenal. And the collaboration that, that we have with them is, is terrific. Not just, uh, you know, in those early mornings where we're trying to make decisions about school here, but, you know, for instance, on Saturday, um, we had an event this past Saturday uh, with with weather in in Berkeley County, and they did a they did a great job at, at trying to take care of things there. So, you know, I just want to give a shout out to them, and I also want to say that, you know, um, Law Enforcement Appreciation Day was yesterday. If you haven't thanked the law enforcement, um, this is a good time to 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 reflect on their services, and they put their lives on the line every time they put a uniform on, just to be able to say thank you to them. Um, our um ace award winner um the teacher was uh, recognized monday night hannah horner from spring mills high school she's fantastic and her uh, enthusiasm is pervasive um uh, throughout throughout that school she's awesome i uh, just wanted to say congratulations to her it is school board appreciation month so uh i said thank you on monday night but now on on uh, Radio, I want to say thank you to our school board members for the commitment they have for the excellence in Berkeley County and, and all that they put forward. Monday is Martin Luther King Day. The schools and offices will be closed. We do have a community event coming up on Wednesday the 17th, um, which is new. We've been doing each quarter, we've focused on doing a community event where uh, we present an uh, opportunity for people to come in and ask questions. Um, th- there's a, uh, a form online if you're planning to attend the community event. It'll be at uh, um, the Berkeley 2000 Center at the Parks and Rec building next Wednesday at 5.30. Um, I just wanted to uh, also, I talked about a Department of Highways, but uh, for those people that have been on calls with me the last three or four days at, at 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, uh, appreciate their dedication in uh, putting student safety first. So I appreciate you guys having me in today and look forward to the next time. We'll see you January 24, Ron. Sounds good. That's your next time in the hot seat today. <laughs> Sounds good. Grab yourself some rum cake on the way out. Take some for Carla, too. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. And bring a Thank piece you. into Ron. Ron. <laughs> <laughs>